Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. I have this quest belonging to my character Carlos here, that when you walk hey, up man. to him, he'll speak to you and basically I'm tell you he's got dead. car troubles and the big race is about to start, and he needs some urgent car parts to get his car up and running before the race. And he'll quest you to go and get him some new racing tyres, a new spark plug, like so, and finally, a new turbocharger. And then after collecting all the parts, you can run back up to Carlos and hand it to him back. And he'll You're be very life. grateful and say Thanks. thank you very much and then there we go now the quest is good and it works but there's no urgency to it even though the race is about to start you can just choose not to do it or collect any of the parts and there's no urgency so in today's tutorial we're going to look at adding a timer system where you have a set time in order to accomplish your tasks in this case collect all the three items if the time runs out quest fails if you pass it timer is ignored and you can carry on so let's get started So looking at my quest, I basically have a really simple quest. It spawns the pickups, then I have a, t a branch which contains all three tasks to pick each item up, and then I have the rest where I talk to Carlos and such. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add an event for this branch here that will begin the timer, and then I will add one after speaking to Carlos that will end the timer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create the widget that will house our timer. So I'm going to come into my UI folder, and I'm just going to create a new user interface widget blueprint. And I'm going to set it to a type of user widget. And I'm going to say WB timer. And inside here, all I'm going to do is just add a text variable. And I'm going to call it TXT timer display. I'll set my fill screen to desired just so I can see what it will actually look like as a component. And I'll just set it to what I want it to look like time 0000, zero, zero, zero like so. And that's pretty much all I want to do with it. All I need to do is make sure it's ticked as a variable. This is the part where you can go and customize it or do any anything you want with it. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a small outline just so it sticks out from the background when it's on screen. Next I'm going to jump into the graph and I'm going to delete the tick and the pre-construct because we don't need them. The only one we need is the construct here. So I'm going to drag off and I'm going to do set timer by function and this is how we run timers in Unreal. And I'm going to say the function name will be update timer and then I'll set it to the time to be one and the looping ticked. So what this will do is create a timer that runs essentially forever and it will call the function update timer every one second and of course when we finish with the timer we do need to remember to clear it up so i'm just going to come across from here and just promote it to a variable called cache timer and i'm going to plonk it there now because we've created the function name update timer i'm going to come and actually create that function here update timer so this update timer is going to be called every single second so what we need to do is count down from the time that we've set it to until we reach zero and then at that point, we know the time has run out. I'm going to create a variable up here called time remaining, and I'm going to set it to a type of float. The only other difference is I'm going to set it to instance editable and expose on spawn. This means we can easily set it later. Then from this time remaining, I'm going to drag it in holding the control or command key, and I'm going to drag off and do minus for subtract, and I'm just going to take one off of it. So every single time this timer is called, which is every one second, it will take one second off of it. And then I can come and set the time remaining to it like so. And we're essentially taking one off of it. After this, we need to now update the UI so we can actually update this here to actually say the correct time. So I'm going to drag from this time remaining and I'm going to use a built-in Unreal function called time seconds to string. And this will basically convert it to a better format that we can use. And then from here, I can drag in our TXT timer display and I can do set text like so. After plugging it in here and letting it auto convert to what it needs, I can connect it up like so. Now, so far, it will come in, call this update timer every second. It will take down the remaining time and it will update the timer display. The only thing what's left now is to check the remaining time to see if it's less than or equal to zero. If it is, then it means we've run out of time. So it can connect it up. And the reason we're doing this after we've set the text is you don't want it to fail when it says one second on screen because you might just get there in time. You physically want it to say zero on screen and then fail. And just with that little bit here, it'll add just a little niceness to the UI. And if we get true here, meaning we've failed, then we need to actually just clear everything up, fail the task and do everything we need. So I'm going to come in and create another function here called timer 
finished. And this one's going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to get narratives component and then I'm going to come off and complete a data task, complete narrative data task like so. And then in here, we need a data task that we can actually call to say you've run out of time. And this could be used for a multitude of things such as running out of time and failing, or it could be used of you need to stay away from the cops for X amount of time. So I'm going to come into my content drawer, my blueprints data tasks. And I'm just going to create a new narrative data task called DT timer finished. And I'm just going to come up and remove the DTs to make it look nice. And I'll call it timer name as the argument. Now that we've done that, we can come back into this complete narrative data task and we can call the timer finished data task. And it will ask what our timer name is. So I'm just going to promote this to a variable called timer name. And I'm just going to make sure I tick instance editable and expose on spawn. Next, after this, we know we've completed the task. So we're going to clear the timer. So I'm going to drag in the cache timer that we stored earlier and I'm going to call clear and invalidate timer. So finally, I'm going to make this timer widget self-destructive, meaning once it's finished, it clears itself up. So I'm going to also come and call remove from parent, which will basically destroy the UI widget. So it will come in and just remove this. The final thing we need to do is in update timer. We just now need to call timer finished like so. And then right in the beginning of the event graph, just before the event construct, I'm going to call update timer like so. And the reason we're calling it first is so we don't have to wait a second before it shows on screen 60 seconds or 45 seconds. It will instantly spawn it on the screen, instantly change it to the correct time and then start ticking down. And with that, we can compile and save. So to actually get this rendering on the screen, we're going to open up the narrative default UI. So just press the control or command P and then you can search for narrative default UI and open it up. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come and add an overlay here and I'm going to add it just on the base canvas here. So it's outside of everything because then it won't fade away. And I'm going to call this OL timer. And now you can position this anywhere you want. So I'm going to position mine in the center of the screen over here. And I'm going to move it up, to say, 250 and away from the screen by 50. I'm going to click size to content so it will automatically size itself later. And I'm going to make sure that I've ticked the overlay as a variable because we need to access it later. And that's all we need to do for that so I can compile and save. Now, if I jump into the graph and make sure I'm in the quest graph because it's pretty much quest related, right at the bottom, I'm going to come and create a new custom event called start timer and this time is going to take two input the first one will be the time and that'll be a type of float the next will be our data task name and i'm going to set this to a type of string this is just so we can track the timer correctly and we're not getting mixed up with anything else now from here we can drag off and we can do create widget and we can now create our new timer widget like so. And you'll see it's automatically asking for two parameters. So I'm going to connect them up to our new ones here like so. Next, I'm going to store this as a variable so we can access it later and I will set it to current timer and now we can find our overlay timer and we can drag this in holding the control key to do a get and I can drag off and choose add child I can connect it up and for the content I can just drag in our timer like so the final safety check we're going to do is just before we actually create the widget I'm going to drag the current timer in and I'm going to right click it and choose get validated get convert to validator get and this is basically going to tell us whether we already have a timer running. If we don't, then we'll go off and we'll create the timer. But if we do, in order to not stack timers up, we're going to prevent it like this. If you do want the ability to add multiple timers, then simply convert current timer to an array. And then you'll just have to keep track of which tasks they belong to. I'm just going to wrap this in a comment and call it timer setup. The only thing remaining now is to actually start and stop the timer when we need to. So I'm going to jump back to my quest here. And from where I want the timer to begin, so I want the timer to start on this branch here, just under it, I'm going to drag off and choose a complete narrative data task, and I will set its type to timer finished. The argument, I will set it to Carlos's, Carlos's car parts timer. You can set yours to whatever you want. And I'm going to make sure it's ticked hidden on both aspects, because we don't want this one to be tracked. So this is going to be the fail point. So I'm going to delete the quest state, and I'm going to drag off and choose fail the quest. And this is if you run out of time. And the fail text will be, you didn't collect Carlos's parts in time. There we go. Now, then the only other thing we have to do is create our events, which is going to be really simple. So I'm going to open up the content drawer here. And inside the events, I'm going to come and create a new event by right clicking narrative narrative event and I'll call it any start 
request timer and then I will overwrite the function execute event and I'll just remove the return node for now. I'm going to right click and choose get player pawn and I will convert this to whatever my current character is where I store my UI. If you store your UI in your controller, convert to your controller instead. So I'm going to cast it to my first person character and then from here I'm going to get the narrative UI and then I'm going to simply call start timer then for the two parameters it needs for the time i'm just going to promote it to a variable and then for the data task i'm also going to promote it to a variable so we can set those per quest finally i'm just going to add a return note here with a success value but if i fail to cast my player for whatever reason i'm just going to make sure i return nothing to not stop narrative hanging the next thing i'm going to do is just overwrite the get craft display text and i'm just going to populate it with some nice text so we know what this event does so i will append and i will say start timer of and I will drag in the time for and then I will finally drag in the data so this will say start timer of five seconds five seconds for Carlos's car parts perfect now I can compile and see so if I jump back into my quest graph now I can click on the graph where I want it to start and I can add an event here of start quest timer and it will ask for two things the first one will be what argument I want to pass when, when it fails and that will be Carlos's car part and I will set the timer to be 45 seconds and you can set it to whatever you want it to be and I'm going to set it to the start so as soon as it comes to this branch and it's waiting it will start the timer now the only other thing we need to do is we need to end the timer when we finish it otherwise it will keep ticking on and we don't want that but this again is really easy so I'm actually just going to come and copy this start quest timer holding control and clicking copy and I, I will rename it to stop quest timer I will open it up and inside the execute event I can actually delete the two parameters and the start timer and I will simply just call get current current timer which is the cache widget we stored earlier I will right click it and choose validate to get just in case for some reason the widget isn't there and then I'm just going to from this call for timer finished like so and if you remember the timer finished clears it the timer up removes it from the widget and does everything it needs to and that's now nice and set up in the get graph display text I can just delete most of this off and just call stop timer and now with a compile and save I can jump back to my quest on the fail I can now call stop timer but one thing I am going going to do is I don't want in my quest here it actually completes the quest once you've finished talking to Carlos and he's thanked you for it I want the quest timer to stop as soon as you start talking to it so instead of stopping the timer in my quest I'm actually going to come and stop it on the dialogue so the dialogue when you first run up to Carlos once you find all the parts is this one here so I'm just going to add the event to this one saying stop quest timer And now, ladies and gentlemen, with a compile and save, if we jump in, we should now hopefully have a timer. So you can see, I can run up to Carlos here. He'll start hey, talking. And the timer has started. We've got 43 seconds. I best get on finding all the parts. So I'll get this one. And it will say some dialogue. And we can see the timer is still ticking down. So I can run up to this one here. I can get the second part. And then I will finally run off and get the third part. There we go. And now you can see, I can run up to Carlos. And hopefully, before the timer, there we go. The timer has disappeared. And you can see the quest is now successful succeeded there we go ladies and gentlemen one slight fix i'm going to fix is i wanted it to say time and then the timer but it currently removes that and to easily fix that where we set the text here i'm just going to drag this across and give us a bit more room and i'm going to drag off from the text and call format text like so inside here we can use curly braces to add variables so i'm going to put time colon and then in curly brace i will put the time and you can put anything you want such as current time and you'll see it'll create a variable which we can plug in the actual time to like and that will fix the formatting so you can display it however you like so just for the sake of testing i'm going to reduce my time to 20 seconds seconds which I know isn't enough to complete the task so I will run up to him and I will begin the quest again and you will see hey, the timer will start oh no we've got 20 seconds I will try and collect all the pieces I can but I know I can't get back to Carlos in time there we go and then you can see after I run up to him now I haven't got all the car parts right. so he'll just tell me I need some more and then the timer will run out and the quest will fail there we go ladies and gentlemen a quest timer it's all properly formatted and I'm going to set this back up to 40 seconds because that's a good challenging time there we go a nice simple quest timer in narrative you can expand this to do hey, whatever man. you want the only downside to the one i have created at the moment is it only belongs 
one quest at a time. If you have multiple quest timers going off at once, or for each individual task you want a separate timer, such as a timer for the spark plug, a timer for the turbocharger, a timer for the racing tires, you will have to modify it slightly, where instead of setting the timer at global scale, you will want to maybe look at setting it inside the branch, which will set it at this level, or you can overwrite the narrative task and add a parent and set it to each individual task. But for me, having it at the top level will suffice for majority of games. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment and subscribe. If you've got anything else you would like to see, please let me know in the comments. My name is Decryption and I will see you next time.